privilege. Privilege, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, is a right or immunity granted as a peculiar benefit or favor. Privilege, according to Oxford Dictionaries, is a right rich and powerful people in a society have. And privilege, according to the Urban Dictionary, the world's leading dictionary for urban slang and English, privilege is defined as the sweet end of the inequality stick. Now, I have a question. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of white privilege. Of course you have, it's 2016. If you're not raising your hand, it's probably because you live white privilege. You live with these advantages every single second of your life. Now, with that being said. Black privilege, Taya, let me tell you about black privilege. Black privilege, according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary means, well, no definition is given. Black privilege, according to the Oxford dictionary means, no exact match for black privilege in US English. But according to the Urban Dictionary, black privilege is a false concept put forth by white people who are uncomfortable with the real idea of white privilege. But how much of a concept is it? Now you may be thinking, gee, I only thought white privilege existed. Well, so did we until we began to realize the disadvantages that come along with our race and skin tone. Charday and I come from two different backgrounds, environments, etc. But we share something important. We share something that we believe is very powerful, but some people may believe as a negative. We share being black. We share a set of disadvantages no other race has to go through. One of the experiences we've both had to go through and many others have had to go through is an oppressive educational system. It all began in kindergarten. I was going to a predominantly black school with predominantly white teachers and staff. So there I was far from understanding much of my environment and I was already being oppressed. My black classmates and I were being told, black people aren't good enough to teach, but white people are. But it didn't stop there, of course. See, my school wasn't quite religious, but it did introduce to us Christianity. And for those of you who are familiar with Christianity, then you know that the picture of Jesus is a white man. So boom, smack dab in my face, I am being told that the savior of all mankind is a white man but regardless of the truth and however religion may go, this added to the already existing white privilege. It was my first day of first grade. My dad walked me to school, dropped me off, said hello to my teacher, and walked away. While he was walking away, my teacher looked at me and said, Taya, are you adopted? I said, I don't know. I was six. I didn't even know what adopted meant. But here I was in Ann Arbor, one of the most diverse cities I'll ever live in, and an educator is asking a six-year-old if she's adopted, just because her dad is a few shades darker than her. Oh, and I spent most of my year the only black girl in my class. I am now a seven-year-old child in the second grade, and I finally have an African-American teacher. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, I'm in a predominantly black classroom, but all of my white counterparts are being moved to excelling classrooms even though most of them did not excel. And what's to excel in the second grade anyway? I guess I did not excel in picking my boogers and coloring outside the lines in my coloring books. One day in third grade, I was reading a book when a little white boy in my class comes to me and says, Taya, your hair looks like it was struck by, by lightning. What was I supposed to say to that? I ran into the bathroom and started crying. When my teacher finally got me out of the bathroom, I told her what happened and she tried to make the boy apologize to me. He said, why do I have to apologize? That's actually what her hair looks like. I often wonder if he remembers this experience because I have never forgotten it. I can't tell you anything else I learned in third grade. This one experience changed my life forever. The big four. Yep, now I'm in fourth grade living in a new city, Ann Arbor that is. I'm beginning to see a progressive amount of diversity in the schools and classrooms. But how progressive is it when all of the students that look like me are being told to repeat a grade or is constantly in read 180? The further I went, the more subliminal the messages became. I was being programmed to love the country that I live in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Yada, yada, yada. I was being forced to be loyal and commit to a country that was built off the backs of slaves and immigrants that is now willing to elect political leaders that are corrupt or even harass Muslims and kill innocent African Americans. Middle school, a new school, a chance to actually be taught by a black teacher. That's what I thought. It never happened. I was never taught by a black teacher. English, which was one of my favorite subjects, became my least favorite subject in one assignment. 
The assignment was to pick a book from the list our teacher gave us and related to our lives. The only book that was about a black person was the narrative of Frederick Douglass. How was I, a black teen living in the 21st century, supposed to relate her life to Frederick Douglass, who was born in the 1800s? I asked my teacher, he said, oh, Taya, don't worry about it, just write something down so I can give you a grade. How was that supposed to, how was that supposed to help me go into the real world? It didn't, and it couldn't. I've just turned 13, and I've seen more legal punishments than your average inmate. I've dabbled in and out of trouble. But when I say dabbled, I got more than just my pinky toe wet. I've been suspended and probably almost expelled. But can my white counterpart say the same? Now you may be thinking, well, did her white counterpart do what she did? Sometimes no, but sometimes yes. And this is when black privilege is seen at its finest. Black student breaks a rule. White student breaks the same exact rule. Can you guess which student gets the harsher punishment? Can you guess which student has to make up more work? Can you guess which student the teachers and staff are more unlikely to help? Can you guess which student is put in the system to stay in the system to only become a statistic? Well, if you've guessed an African-American student, then you are correct and therefore oblivious to your white privilege and more likely to subconsciously promote black privilege, or should we say, the, the disadvantages, disadvantages of, of black, black people. people. High school. In high school, regular classwork came naturally to me. So I wanted to learn more. I would ask in history, can we learn about black history, women's rights, and women's history? My teachers would always say, oh, it's not in the curriculum, it's not that important. Of course they would say that they were white. They wouldn't have to enter the world and face the things that I would have to face. So here I was again. I was supposed to be learning this core curriculum to make me a well-rounded student and a well-rounded person, but I wasn't being taught things that were relatable to me, things that would help me in the real world. I was faced with educators who were only worried about standardized testing and an administration who seemed to think that the school's reputation and funding was more important than my education. High school. Where to begin with high school? High school was like the cherry on top when being in an oppressive educational system. As I began to reflect on my high school experiences, many things stand out, such as how all of black history within AP US history or world history only speaks about how black people were slaves and nothing more, or how African American humanities is an elective rather than a requirement. Why is it that all students are required to learn about their history except black students? And how is it racist for us to get 28 days out of the year to celebrate how we were able to overcome adversities and white people get 11 months to celebrate themselves? Or the simple fact that no matter how well I do in school, even if, I'm a G even if I have a 4.0 GPA, I still can't go to my first choice co college because my parents can't afford it. Or the simple fact that we are never seen as equal unless we rise to white people's expectations, unless we wear Lululemon and never ever wear our natural hair. Or how if you maintain a great GPA or could even play a sport in college, it's always pushed into your face that your white counterparts can get into college without affirmative action. As if affirmative action still exists or is even effective towards black students, because we all know affirmative action affects white women the most. Or how when you get on stage, the majority of your audience is white. And so you have to pray and hope that they don't judge you the moment they see how rich and dark your skin is. Or the fact that black people are never seen as an equal. Or the fact that you, even if you get suspended, you're already on your way to prison just because of the school to prison pipeline. Or the fact, you, will you be able to keep up? You start by teaching real black history instead of forcing us to believe that we were only slaves. You start by taking responsibility before you suspend a student just because they write the F word in their paper. You start by really realizing that black people are human beings and that we are as equal as you are. Thank you. Thank you.